Hey everybody, this is Tom Cherry Holmes with Errata Online and the FujiNet Project, and I wanted to show you the results of the latest test to come out of our camp. Uh, Moswald has been very hard at work on an 850 compatible uh, R device, and this is the test program to take and exercise that. To facilitate that, it's actually composed of two parts, or actually three parts. Um, the first being the ESP compatible firmware, which has been trimmed down to only use just as much as we need to be able to boot a built-in disk on the flash uh, containing three communications programs. Uh, we've included Bob Term, Ice T, and a copy of Plato Term for testing here. Uh, there is also the config program from previous test and iteration so that the wireless network can be set and reset automatically as needed. And finally, uh, there is there are the programs themselves. Uh, the ESP compatible firmware which takes and melds together all of the functionality needed uh, to uh, provide the R device as well as provide just enough of the D device for everything to work. So with that, let's go ahead and push forward. Uh, as before, uh, this was based on uh, code that was, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> we, seem to have, we seem to be grabbing a search box here by accident. Let's try that again, okay. This is based on Wi-Fi modem code by uh, UC Salen, and we've merged it with our FujiNet code here, just for the test. One of the things that we did add to it is actually the ability to respond to configuration changes from the SIO side, as well as emit the appropriate responses for things like going into concurrent mode. Now, there are a couple of things still missing. Uh, primarily, uh, SIO type one polling isn't implemented yet. Don't worry, it will come. Uh, but for now, what we've done on the flash disk is we've provided the Altera 850 handler, which loads the handler into place without needing a Type 1 pole. Uh, I've also made some changes to the code here uh, in order to take and allow uh, a TASCII translation to actually work when entering in modem commands. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. And actually, I'm going to go ahead, reboot the machine here so we can see. We'll see, since the reset button has been, has been pushed here, I hit the reset button a little quick, so, yep, it caught it at the end of that. No problem, it recovered just fine. Resets the network. And boots our built-in flash menu, which may have a, uh, a menu that's familiar to you guys. So there we go. We have three programs on this flash disk. We have a copy of Bob Term, we have a copy of Ice-T, and of course we have a copy of Plato Term. So let's go ahead and just go into Bob Term for demonstration here. Bob Term will load up, and at least for right now, yes, this is actually on the flash. Uh, when we actually do this in production, you will be able to load this directly off of the internet or from local storage, either way, because the handler will be able to be swapped in and swapped out as needed. So, with that, uh, right now Bob Term is defaulting to 2400 baud. We'll go ahead and turn that up to 9600 baud here, just for demonstration. And we'll go ahead and set translation to Atari. It's not complete yet, as you'll see right here. Uh, while it does respond to my Atasky EOL, uh, it still shows the character turn and line feeds here. Uh, I'll be making a couple of changes to that shortly. But let's go ahead, and I'm going to pop up in another window here, uh, the Atasky BBS list here, over at sfhqbbs.org, and we're going to try some. Like most other Wi-Fi modems, you use standard AT commands using a host name in place of the phone number. A colon designates the port number. 
in this case. Port 9000. And you can see here, Connect 9600. And in a few moments, we'll see Alcatraz's uh, sign-on happen. Of course, it's uh, trying to detect ASCII and Itasky here, hitting return. Since we are in Itasky mode, we see the Itasky screen. Go ahead and log in. And we can see right here that it's working just fine. 9600 baud, handling it just fine. Go ahead, since this is a short demo, we'll go ahead and goodbye. We'll leave the BBS here. Yep, and it looks like we had a slight buffer overflow there. No big deal there, but something that we can definitely deal with. Uh, and we'll go ahead and select translation and we'll go back to ASCII. Going back to ASCII puts the character turn and line fiend in the appropriate places. Oop, looks like I missed a key. And here we see level 29 coming up just fine. It looks like when we're connecting to Foztex that he has a bit of a throttle attached to the front of this based on the pacing of how data is coming through. We won't do anything here, we'll just log off. Boom, okay, go ahead, log off. And there we go, no carrier, and we're ready to go again. Now this next time, I'm actually going to go ahead and reset the FujiNet here because I noticed a bug when I went into play to turn so that we can do this next test here, and hopefully this will come out just fine. Since I did hit the reset pro, since, since I did hit reset, it will go back into config and attempt to reconnect to the network. We're still dealing with timing issues, and I'm working them out. I actually took a break from working through the timing timing issues today to uh, test out uh, Moswald's uh, Modem 850 test here, and it's working great. I liked it so much, I added a few things of my own to it. So now we're here. Hopefully I hit option in time. <laughs> if not, no biggie, I'll just hit reset again. Oop. Nope. Okay. Looks like I needed to hit option again, so I just went uh, option reset, and we will try loading Play-Doh one more time. <laughs> And yes, in case anyone's noticing, uh, it is using MIDOS 4.53 on this particular disk, particularly because MIDOS allows you to chain auto runs together. And now with this, we have a Play-Doh Play Term 1.3 launch screen here. Uh, hopefully in a few moments it will take and catch and we'll see 9600 baud ready to go. Okay, and with that, we'll log into Errata Online. which of course errata.online, port number 8005, and within a few moments we'll see the sign-on screen. And you can see the sign-on screen's coming across just fine at 9600 bits per second. Now again, there are still some optimizations that need to be had. Uh, Primarily, sometimes the buffer will overflow, and when that happens, you'll get some graphical glitches, but it will recover just fine. But at least for now, you can see that the, uh, that the experience is working just great. Go ahead. There is a cheat sheet, of course, with Plato terms so that you can bounce, uh, so that you can bounce between games, etc. And that graph glitch right there was not the modem program, but is actually a small bug in the menu on the, on, on the system itself. So, let's see if we can do something here, just for the sake of 
uh, demonstration. Hmm, air fight perhaps. And you'll notice that, yeah, this is indeed at 9600 bits per second. And it's buffering away just fine. And in fact, as soon as I take and optimize the buffers a little bit, I'll release this test uh, with even better performance. We'll go ahead and pick a plane here. Okay, usually do. Call myself my usual pilot name. Put about 8,000 pounds of fuel, sure, no problem, with 10 missiles. That's a fully loaded plane right there. And there we go, ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead, for the, for the sake of a little bit extra speed, we're gonna turn off the controls. We're gonna turn up the flaps, pull down the flaps, hit the throttle, and go. And you'll see that because of buffering here, there's still a moment while it takes and, and, and uh, before it actually takes and does a drawing update. But you'll see that once the data comes through, it draws pretty fast. Anyway, and yes, this is indeed a first-person flight, flight, flight simulator that you can play with multiple players on Errata Online. Oop, and I forgot to pull back, didn't I? <laughs> there we go. So you can see. It's just pushing along just fine. We'll go ahead and stop it here. And we'll go somewhere else real quick, just as a quick little throwback here. Maybe read some notes, perhaps. Go to D to read some notes. In a few moments, I have one celebrating the new year. Happy New Year, everyone, etc. And again, I apologize for my 1200XL's video quality. I'm hoping to get a UAV installed into it soon. I have it right here. I just need to do it. So, so I mean, yeah, there we go. We'll go ahead and uh, shift stop to sign off here. Hit back to exit, which will hang up the connection for us. If we don't, within 30 seconds, it will do it automatically. But there we go. Uh, you can see Plato Terms running just fine, and if I hit Select X to leave, it'll take and bounce us back out to the menu. Again, loading the handler, getting everything in place. And there we go. So that's the Modem 850 test. More to come, but I thought I wanted to show you guys. So it's starting to, the features are starting to take shape. So until next time, guys, have fun.